Management. A lot of that is catch up post COVID with the worker shortages that we've been experiencing. But another part of that is we've got 60,000 more Kiwis on unemployment benefit and we've got to get Kiwis back into work. Just, so just to clarify, no targets? Uh, targets come down, yep. Um, Lower zero, targets. Zero. zero. <laughs> For a man of successful outcomes. Yes, I know. That's a yes. Yes. The outcome is less people leaving this country. So it's not a target. That's well, it is. Anyway. It is. Okay. One less person would be okay. <laughs> Well, significantly less people, obviously. On the region's roads, uh, what would National do to... Sorry, on the... Regions, on this region's roads, what would National do to increase the roading resilience? There's still quite a few um, really like dodgy sort of roads for the people after the cyclone. There's been places that have government funding, but the roads are still not great. What sort of things would... Well, we've do? talked very much about our roading policy under Transport for the Future, which is our policy to get the roads maintained, uh, to make sure that we're actually rebuilding roads back and actually repairing roads. Uh, that's a very big focus for us. We're going to reprioritise some of the spending within the Transport Fund uh, to make sure that we deliver better roads. If we can deliver better roads and safer roads uh, that are better maintained, that's actually how we get things more productive and people in this this part to be able to go about their daily business without um, and, and, and be able to use a roading network that's reliable. There are, there are a dozen um, social justice kind of groups that have come out and calling on the next government to stop beneficiary bashing. Do you think they're tar targeting that at you? Oh no, not at all. I mean we've made a very strong commitment to say that we're going to increase benefits each and every year. We're going to index it to inflation and cost of living, so that means the purchasing power of beneficiaries' uh, benefits are actually protected. That they can buy the same pa uh, parcel of goods that they could the year before because they are protected by inflation. Will, they get, will the beneficiaries be better off under national or labour? <laughs> Um, well, we've got a different approach. We're going to lock it in around inflation and the cost of living. That's been the long-standing um, approach. You've seen a government that actually changed it to, to a different dim dimension and then ended up changing it back because inflation is the thing that you have to protect beneficiaries against. And that's what we're going to do. So the yeah, beneficiaries who are thinking about who to vote for, will they be better off under you or in Labor? Uh, well, they're going to get regular increases each and every single year. They're going to be indexed to inflation. So and, is that you? And that, that's, that, well, I think they've got a good deal. I mean, that's exactly what we want to be able to do is protect their uh, purchasing power of their benefit. Is it a better deal than Labor? Sorry? Is it a better deal than Labor? Um, well, Labor's got a different approach to it, but Labor had a different approach and then changed the approach, now it's changed the approach again. So let's be clear, you know, Labor is not creating an economy that actually helps beneficiaries. But what we're talking about is actually wanting to grow our economy and get people off welfare and into work. That's really important. We have 180,000 people on unemployment benefit. We have 60,000 more people on unemployment at a time of record work shortages and low unemployment. That is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. So we're going to build an economy that gets people off welfare and into work, and we're also going to make sure that benefits purchasing power is protected by linking their payments to, and increases to inflation. How much, how much influence do you think uh, Justin Trudeau in coming out and endorsing uh, Labour will have on voting? <laughs> Um, uh, uh, that's, uh, former Prime Ministers can get involved as they wish in any campaign. Uh, much, and do you think it's going to shift the dial at all? Uh, I personally you don't think. I think I would just say to you, I think the reality is that um, you know, this is a government that New Zealanders have realised has not delivered for them for six years. <laughs> and what they want is a government now to deliver and to get things done. That's what we're going to do. That's the work that we have ahead of us. And I think New Zealanders understand that and they want change. And that's what they're about. If, uh, if you were in government, is uh, looking at Hamas being a terrorist entity, something that you would consider, and how worried are you about escalation in that region? Well, again, I mean, it's incredibly uh, sad and shocking the images that we're seeing out of uh, Israel, but we condemn outright the, the Hamas attack on Israel and the impact that it's had and the pain and suffering it's had on innocent civilians. Uh, and we certainly um, respect Israel's right to defend itself uh, without doubt. And so for us, yes, we'd love to see peace in the Middle East. The answer is actually to develop a two-state two solution which has been a long-standing position. That's a lot of work. That's, it requires um, it, to do so peacefully and also diplomatically. But would you declare Hamas a terrorist organisation? Well, I think what we have seen is a terrorist attack, uh, and I think that is the reality of it. But the point is, again, we condemn those attacks because uh, that's having huge impact on, on its unjustified attacks. So just to be specific, the political wing of Hamas, the, the next government is likely to get advice, or is set to get advice on whether or not to, to designate a terrorist entity. We will get the same advice in government. I'm 
not party to, to foreign affairs briefings, but we will take that advice so in government. But what I'd just say to you very strongly is we condemn in the strongest possible terms the Hamas attacks yeah, on Israel. We so defend Israel's right to defend itself, um, and it's completely unjustified. Do you have a view currently on whether Hamas uh, political will, wing should be... I, I will take advice from, from once in government from foreign affairs, but at the moment I can, can't express any stronger, and I've been consistent from day one, unlike the government that seem to have two different positions from the Naya Mahuta and Chris Hipkins, uh, that actually this, that we condemn these attacks outright, we defend uh, Israel's right to defend itself, uh, and actually we want to see peace in the region, and we want that resolved diplomatically and peacefully. The easiest, government, uh, easiest question of the campaign, can I ask for your 60 second pitch on why New Zealanders should vote for National? Uh, look, this is a great country, but we are heading in the wrong direction. Every Kiwi understands that we're going backwards economically, uh, on crime, on health and education, and what New Zealand needs is a government that's going to come in and rebuild our economy, restore law and order, deliver better health and education. We're going to be a government that's going to deliver for all New Zealanders, because there's no doubt about it. In the last six years, we have gone backwards. We need to get things done for the New Zealand people and go to work. That's what we're going to do on October 15th. The government recently appointed a group uh, to look at the issue of freshwater allocation. Uh, what's your view on it? Um, it, it? Freshwater allocation, very complex issue, very open to uh, continuing to have a working group looking into that. Right, okay. And so when we look post uh, October 14, should you be able to form a government? How have you set a date in your mind when you want to be able to say this is when we should be able to form a government by? Um, I, we're before the election. The results are in the hands of the New Zealand people. That's why I keep saying if they want change, they have to step up to the plate and party vote national to make that happen. Uh, until we see the election night results, we'll work with that and we'll make sure that we can form a government, but we'll work with what the results are on the night. Yeah, but obviously, you can... there's the, you know, there are, is the, the aspect of, of Winston Peters having a track record of wanting to wait for, for the special votes, and we've got quite a lot of things you know, that are coming up, international trips, those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, so have you at all contemplated what, by, by what time you would want to form a government if you were in a position? We are getting so way ahead of ourselves. We're three days out so from an election. Uh, we're three days out from an election. And what I'd say to you is that New Zealanders have three days to determine what happens in the next three years. And what's very clear is that there is a mood for change across this country, that people actually want a government to deliver for them, and that hasn't been happening. And therefore, I'm encouraging and imploring everybody to say, use your party vote, exercise it with great you know, sober-mindedness and intentionality, and party vote national. Are you concerned that support for national is peak too early in the campaign? Not at all. We've got great momentum. I think most of you have been out and about with us across. We've been in marginal seats most of the last few weeks. Um, you know, we've seen fantastic reaction. So I'm very you know, um, encouraged by the mood that we have out there. I'm encouraged by the support for the National Party. I'm encouraged by our volunteers who have just been you know, going at it and just going the extra mile. Um, I think you know, we've done incredibly well. But I just say to you, I don't want any complacency. You know, I want New Zealanders to understand we are in a difficult set of circumstances. They have a choice over the next three days to make a decision about the next three years. On Antarctica's Scott base, it seems that Antarctic New Zealand didn't lock in a price for lease when they announced them as their preferred contractor. This kept happening with government contracts and it means that commercial outfit has the government over a barrel. Is this something like if you got into government, would you would want to put a stop to? Yeah, I think we need to look at procurement of a bunch of uh, projects that happen whether it's around a range of infrastructure, whether it's in Antarctica or roads or other hospitals, other things that we see as well across the piece. But again, you know what we know is we've got a big investment in infrastructure to make uh, as we ca ca build back the infrastructure deficit we're seeing across the country. And the costs are. 500 billion and rising is the base. Sorry? The cost for Scots base is 500 billion and rising. 500 Sorry, billion? Million and yeah. rising. Yeah. Is yeah. the base still rising? I was a bit worried about that. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like uh, it's, it's like almost, two, two, almost, almost twice the uh, size of New Zealand economy. Is so, um, yeah. Nicola just almost fell over. Uh, is Oh, look, it's, it's really important that we have a very strong presence in Antarctica. New Zealand punches above its weight. Uh, we have huge influence, uh, and it's an important part, and an increasingly important part of the world that we need to have influence in. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not close enough. I haven't been briefed on the specifics around the project. Uh, rest assured that um, in the National Party, we know how to get things done. Uh, we will be economically prudent and smart, uh, and we'll be making sure that we, have, we can maintain a presence, but also uh, that we get it right-sized. Just on the tens of thousands of the country may have given up on New Zealand. What is your message to them 
and uh, do you want them to come back? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I say to so many each and every day that say to me, if you don't win, we're leaving. Uh, I say, please just, just wait till October 15th. Uh, help and hope is on the way because you know, that is the problem, right? People choosing to go overseas for an overseas experience is one thing, but actually young people who I've spoken to choosing because no matter how hard they work, they don't feel they can get ahead in this country because of our economy not being in the right shape. Uh, people actually not feeling safe inside New Zealand. People actually not feeling the healthcare and education systems are actually working for them. And so that's our responsibility as a new government is, and that's my job as Prime Minister to make sure I'm building a proposition in a society and a country that actually people are choosing to stay in here. And we have been here before. You know, we have been here before where New Zealand lost its way and it was a less attractive place that people didn't feel there was opportunity and we built it back and we're going to do so again. Is there been any blowback or any concern from National Party supporters following um, Chris Bishop at the weekend talking about the prospect of a second election? Uh, absolutely not, no. I mean, New Zealanders understand and our, our supporters understand how important this election is. Uh, we acknowledge that MMP elections are always close. It's just the nature of our system. Uh, that, that means that we always, every election is close. There's uncertainty associated with that as well. Uh, and importantly, you know, they know our, know, our, know our position and my position, which is the parties that we're going to work with and that will make work. But right now, they have a big opportunity in the next three days to say they know they want change and they have to step up to the plate and deliver that change and that's why they need to party vote national. I mean, a lot of New Zealanders probably couldn't stomach the thought of having to go through another campaign and another... Well, I can tell you what they can't stomach. What they cannot stomach is Labour, Te Pāti Māori and the Greens, for goodness sake, for the next three years. This is a government with three years and an absolute majority has delivered nothing for New Zealand. Uh, it's spent a huge amount of money, it's taxed people tremendously and it's borrowed heaps and yet we have nothing to show for it. So that's what they can't stomach and that's what they want change for. Just One another... person who wanted to be a candidate for your party is considering going to, you probably would have seen the report in the Herald, uh, considering going to the police over the way that she was treated by the party and, and certain information that was divulged. Have you sought any assurances or had any conversations with Sylvia Wood or any other people in the party as to whether National behaved appropriately? Um, again, that's an issue for the party. You need to talk to them about But have you sought, sought any assurances from your end? Again, an issue for the party. You need to talk to them. Well, no, not, yeah. on, not on whether you're concerned at all. I mean, you're the party leader. You can... If you're concerned about something, you can ask the president. Yeah, sure. But no, I haven't in this case. But actually, you know, the, the bigger issue is it's an issue for the party. And a question from a newsroom. Um, you had a bit of a laugh about dinosaurs yesterday on um, your Twitter page. Um, there was, um, do you yeah. know how that, so, uh, so where did that rumour come from? I have a, no idea. There was another, there was I have no idea. Well, that you put a stop to promotional material for a new Houston, Houston route at the time because it featured dinosaurs. Is there any truth to that? No, no. I don't know why <laughs> so dinosaurs really like in Houston would come together or, or anything like that. I just think it's incredible that um, here in New Zealand, at a time when actually Kiwis are struggling to find $700 a fortnight to deal with high interest rates, with record high food prices, with rents up $180 a week, uh, with fuel at all time highs, uh, when people aren't feeling safe and we see crime out of control, when our education system is falling apart and healthcare system is in crisis, that actually that's the big issue of the day. Uh, so I've got no idea where it came from, I've got no idea why I get asked the question. Uh, I honestly genuinely have no idea. And um, I appreciate uh, Labor might like some distractions or whoever's planted it or done whatever, but um, the bottom line is we have some serious issues in this country and I think you know that just sort of sums up sometimes the conversation we're having. Do you have any evidence couple. that it's um, uh, spread by the CTU at all? <laughs> <laughs> all I don't know, ask Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. All, 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 all I'd say to you is, look, um, you know, we're focused on New Zealanders here. We, we genuinely are, and that's what this country needs right now. Is um, We're focused on the future. We have a great country. We have incredible people. We have a great future ahead of us. But we now have to choose it. And New Zealanders want change, and they have to step up to the plate, choose it, party vote national, uh, so we can get them to the work and get outcomes improved and, and results for New Zealanders. That rumour came from when you were at New Zealand. Um, did you veto a safety video that had dinosaurs on it because you didn't believe in them? Uh, no, mate. No. Okay. No. No. Um, can we wrap up? It'd be yeah, nice to be yeah, but, but any time someone wants to ask me that stuff, that would be the right question to have asked, I would have thought, before we launched into a full debate for a day and a half on dinosaurs. But, um, <laughs> but if that's what you want to talk about, so be it. Uh, we'll talk about dinosaurs. But I can tell you uh, we need to be able to focus on what's important to the New Zealand people. And right now, you know, they are hurting. They're in a lot of pain and suffering. And it's a serious time. And it needs serious leadership and serious responses. OK, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>